Welcome to Moose Plays, everyone. I'm the Liquor Moose, and today we will be going over my uh, kind of impromptu draft analysis for Season 5 of the PDL, which is my home league, if you do not know. But, uh, yeah, last night I was at a uh, Leafs Red Wings game. You know, <laughs> the beers were flowing, and afterwards I check YouTube, and uh, my good friend and commissioner of this league, uh, Matt, a.k.a. Scotty Sparks, uh, he put up a draft analysis uh, for this league. I originally wasn't going to upload this league because it is going on through school, and school's going to be pretty busy this semester, but I figured, hey, fuck it, let's just do it anyways. He won't be the only... I'll make it so Matt's not the only one who uploads this league. But, uh, yeah, so uh, this will be a lot more rough, I think, than mo like from a content-wise. This will be a lot more rough uh, from my channel. Like, I'm not going to go... I'm not going to do, like like the usual team builders i like to do i'm just gonna like go straight to the replay of the battle and like like very briefly explain the sets there um and uh yeah i mean not too much to say about that uh again like obviously this is just me and my friends so this isn't upload required uh if school does get too busy i unfortunately will have to stop this because obviously school has come before this kind of stuff um and i didn't stop the upa uh, uploads because i'm just got like i've gotten so far into them that it would kind of be a shame if i stopped like the only one that hasn't been uploaded yet uh up to when this is being uploaded because i do want to uh record and upload this video on the same day so uh yeah uh like i i've only like i've the only ones i'm missing are uh for upa are my final week uh upload and then my uh potential playoffs if i get in as well um so yeah i i would feel ashamed if i kind of stopped that so i do want to continue that for sure uh and then yeah so this is going to be a lot more rough this draft analysis is going to be a lot more rough uh normally i like to have like decently decently well edited videos uh when i do my draft analysis but this one's going to be a little more uh bare bones or uh it's just different from what i have uh but yeah so anyways let, let's talk about let's talk about this season so uh last season we were uh we made or Jesus, we switched PDL to a GBA draft like tiering style system. Uh, for season five, we <laughs> changed again to a point based uh, point based system, which I found uh, oh, excuse me that I like a lot better. And uh, yeah, so basically, we we had a vote on like for that we had all of our players go in. We had two separate tier lists of one one list for tier draft, one list for a point based draft. We had a vote. It ended up being tied at the very end. However, all four admins of the league voted for the point system. So we just said, you know what? Why not? We'll try the point system this season. If everyone likes the tier system better, then we can always just go back to it next year. So, uh, yeah. So we, we, we switched to a point system, which I like a lot more. And, yeah, a, a lot of stuff happened. Um, but either way, uh, we're here to talk about my draft analysis for what I drafted. So... Uh, I ended up getting the 14th spot out of 16 teams, so really close to the wheel. Uh, it's close to the back wheel, which I kind of like, but uh, the thing the thing with this league is that a lot of our players don't really play Pokemon outside of this league, like, at all, so they don't really pay attention to, like, draft league trends and stuff like that. So, uh, what I expected to happen, and basically what did end up happening, was everyone just kind of picked the highest point stuff first, um... And yeah, so I, with that in mind, I kind of looked and I, like before the draft, I didn't have a plan going in, but I kind of looked at the board and said, well, what's most likely to drop to me that I feel like could lead a team? And um, by the time I looked at it, I just kind of thought, you know what, it's probably going to end up being either Manaphy or Mew. Uh, Mew ended up going in the... Uh, I think in the seventh spot in the first round, so I did actually end up getting Manaphy as uh, my first round pick. As you can see, uh, we do have the Waterium Z because in this league, uh, it's we handle Z Crystal slightly differently uh, in the PDL than most other leagues do. In this league, there's there isn't like a point or tier restriction to your Z Crystal. You just assign one Pokemon on your entire team to be your Z Captain which can use any Z move in its in its move pool, and then you also get two Z alternates, which um, uh, which can only use damaging Z moves from their move pool. So I designated Manaphy as my Z captain, so, uh, I mean, that was obvious. Just based on the rest of the team, it was obvious to give it to Manaphy, because Z rain dance is a thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what else can I say? It's, a, it's, a, it's another fat balance breaker, like... 
Mega Gallade was on the board by the time it got to me, but I'm using it in UPA right now, so I didn't really want to use it, like, again. <laughs> Even though I think, like, Mega Gallade's quickly turning into one of my favorite Pokemon to build with. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to try something new, which realistically is what I'm starting to use this league as more of now. Like, I just want to try out things that I never got to try out before in draft, so... Uh, I never got to try out Manaphy. In all honesty, it's probably the thing I would have wanted the least. I don't know, like, it seemed... I can't really say it seemed underwhelming, but um, compared compared to everything else, like, I don't know, I, I feel like something else would have been more interesting, but, like, straight up, this was the best thing that was left on the board when it got back to me. Uh, so I just decided to take it and try to build around that. So I got my solid water type, and now uh, I have also a really good uh, setup threat. So now, looking at the board, and I kind of did the same thing. I, there wasn't, again, too many picks between myself and... Uh, the wheels since I'm 14th so uh, second round comes around and I, again I kind of just look what is the absolute best thing left on the board and without a question Mega Diancie was the best thing left on the board without a doubt uh, so now I have so now I have my 100% setup threat and now I have my 100% immediately offensive threat and uh, yeah I think these two together are going to make a really great offensive core uh, and yeah, I mean, not too much to say, I mean, it's a Mega Diancie, I will have to watch out for, uh, random ass HP steals, um, but yeah, like, both of these, th both of these Pokemon are just in immense threats to, uh, in prep just to any team, realistically, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to try both of them, because I haven't really gotten to try any of them, uh, Diancie was kind of, like, when I tried using Diancie in OU, it was slowly falling from its, uh, power, so I didn't get it. Even, I didn't even get to try it in UU before it got quick ban. Um, but yeah, so uh, we have the Diancy Manaphy, a really good, a really good core to start a team with, in my opinion. So uh, not too much really to say about them. They're just they both do what they do. And uh, yeah, so going into the next round, uh, so obviously I had to wait a bunch more picks before it got back to me. And if you know me and long enough, you know that I really like <clears throat> uh, I really like like my U-turn and Volt Switch shenanigans and uh, as well, like with these two, with these two Pokemon, they are very, they're gonna be like very gracious for getting free, quote unquote, free switches into things where I can either like freely spam a fairy move or a rock type move or freely set up with my Manaphy. So my next few picks and like just more so going like forward into the draft, I really wanted to focus on getting a really decent, a really good momentum core that could grant me for not like quote unquote free switches into these two Pokemon. So. Uh, in the third round, it pretty much got, it got to me, and I knew I, I, I took Scizor. So, again, the whole thing of, like, you know, Momentum Core is really good, and then at the same time, uh, this takes a pretty decent offensive check to uh, Mega Deancey off the board for myself. Uh, I did snipe someone with it, so I'm glad with that, but, I mean, Mega Scizor hadn't gone yet, so they still ended up picking that up. Um, but yeah, so, like, Scizor is, uh, is a decent Steel type, which gives me... <laughs> I, I, I tend to draft. I tend to have a bad habit of drafting teams that are relatively weak to fairy spam. So having a steel type with a reliable recovery is going to be really great for that. Um, not as not as bulky as Mega Scizors, where uh, random HP fires could potentially knock this out, but I'm sure I can work around it. Um, and yeah, and then obviously like it's I, in my opinion, regular Scizor is a better defogger than Mega Scizor, so I can definitely see myself bringing defog on this. Uh, and then obviously everyone has to fear like the Source Dance. Um, like the Swords Dance sets that run Bullet Punch, sometimes Bug Bite to get a uh, hold of the Technician. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the Gregulator special here. So uh, maybe I'll have to watch some of his videos to really learn how to uh, work with Scizor. But yeah, so once that happened, <laughs> once I picked up Scizor, it didn't really hit me until like I was literally making food. And after I, make the, after I made the Scizor pick, I was like, oh damn. I don't have another pick, like, at the ready that I really want, which is the whole point of me being at the wheel where I could pick two Pokemon, but I just honestly could not decide how I wanted to do this, um, so I ended up taking Incineroar in round four, like, in kind of a panic mode, uh, just because I wasn't, it was my, it was completely my own fault for being, like, not ready to, try to like, make my pick, uh, I don't regret taking Incineroar at all, it, but it was definitely a little bit early to pick it up. Uh, but I still think it's really good. Uh, now now getting access to Intimidate and then also granting the U-turns. Uh, again, it's another 
It's another thing that can grab uh, great switch-ins for my Manaphy and my Mega Diancie. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to using Incineroar and trying it out with Intimidate because again, I'm, I really want to focus on trying out new stuff so that way in like more serious leagues I can uh, really give them a, like an actual shot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, the noteworthy thing about this is that it actually has the same attack stat as Entei, so I'm sure a Bandit set is, I, I have to imagine it's pretty viable on Incineroar. It doesn't get Sacred Fire, but I mean, it still gets Flare Blitz, and even Darkest Lariat is still a pretty good spammable move. Uh, so yeah, like, it, I think this thing has, like, a both good and offensive and a defensive capability, but I definitely see myself running momentum on it a lot, but again, that's just because it's me. <laughs> um, so, as well... Uh, speaking of the whole momentum thing, uh, my next pick was very much geared towards that, and um, it. So I really wasn't sure where the hell this draft was going, um, and because of that, you kind of always want an emergency button when you have no idea where your draft is going. So I ended up taking in round five Silvali, which was. Uh, by the way, uh, so Manaphy was 18 points, Mega Diancie was 18 points, Scizor was 13, and Incineroar was 9, and Silvali is 11. So, um, I, I, again, like kind of an emergency button. When I drafted it in Season 2 of this league, it was right when Sun and Moon came out, and no one really knew how to properly handle Silvali. Um, its role wasn't really that defined in the metagame. People weren't really sure whether, like, RKS system was going to be way too broken. Um, mainly me. I thought it was going to be, like, the best thing available. <laughs> Not going to lie. Um, but, yeah. So, I I drafted it back then and didn't really know what to do with it. But now, its, it's role is much more defined in the draft meta. It's meant to be a bulky pivot. And uh, now, with Ultra Sun and Moon, it does get defog. So, it does have a purpose beyond just being a bulky pivot. Uh, and then it also has like decent coverage on top of that. Like, I mean, look at this, like Draco Meteor, Double Edge, like Flame Shard, like look at all this stuff. And uh, another thing is, it, it, um, Jesus Christ, um, <laughs> Incineroar doesn't get Pursuit. So uh, me having the option to run Silvali Dark and then getting Pursuit on that is really good as well. Uh, of course, Scizor does get Pursuit as well. So I do have a couple of good Pursuit Trappers. Not necessarily that my team is looking too weak to Psychic types or Ghost types. Uh, maybe to offensive ghost types only because uh, Incineroar and Silvali both don't have reliable recovery. But, I mean, either way, I I'm sure I can work around it. But, uh, yeah, Silvali is kind of just like the emergency button that... Um, it's the emergency button that, like, if I don't grab a type that's kind of on my checklist, I can still have this be that sort of, I guess. Uh, and then on top of that, having Parting Shot uh, when combining... Like, Parting Shot giving Manaphy opportunities more to set up is really insane. So uh, I felt like it was well worth the pick at round 5. So round 6 comes along. Pretty much all the top tier dragons are gone. I'm still looking for a ground type. And uh, yeah, obviously I did not get Garchomp. That went in the first round and so did Zy Zygarde 50. But Zygarde 10 was still on the board. So I figured I'd give it a shot because I'm always looking for an Arrows Resist. So why not try to abuse the Arrows? Um, spoilers, this is my only ground type. <laughs> um, I would have loved to get a secondary ground type that wasn't four times weak to ice. But unfortunately the draft lands just... It just didn't work out just because of other things getting sniped, unfortunately. Even though the thing I was looking at really it was still on the board. I was looking at Swampert, and it was still there. <laughs> um, it didn't get drafted. So, yeah. Um, I'm still really happy with Zygarde, though, because it's a really strong dragon. It has a really good speed tier, as it does check off my, like, personal... Like, my personal checkbox of having one of two Pokemon um, being 115 or above, which I really like. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's a Zygarde, it does Zygarde things. The only thing I'm not too big of a fan of with Zygarde 10% specifically is that I don't have as much setup opportunity uh, as I do, as someone would with Zygarde 50, uh, but that's just because I'm not as bulky. But I am initially faster, which is much better for revenge killing, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, that's Zygarde. And now moving into the next pick, um, I kind of knew... I, uh, by the way, Zygarde was also 11 points, so I don't know what specifically I'm at, but... <laughs> I do know I like the 11 point, uh, the 11 point bracket, and as we'll see with my next pick, uh, I got Rotom Cut, which was eight points, and I I really like the eight point bracket. Apparently, this is apparent in both uh, this season and when I first drafted in GPC. I I looked at the 11 point, the eight point bracket a lot, but uh, regardless of that, 
Rotom Cut was something I knew I wanted pretty much at round three, once I had, or even after round two, once I made the Mega Deancey pick, because Rotom Mo actually has perfect defensive synergy with like the combination of Manaphy and Deancey. Everything that they're weak to, Rotom Mo resists, so I can switch into. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with this pick. It gives me a decent fast electric type. At, like I'm, I've said it a million times before now, if you've watched any of my videos, I have a pretty high standard for what I want my uh, fast electric type. I just have a high bar for my fast electric type. Unfortunately, Zara Aura got picked in the first round. Otherwise, I would have 100% probably picked it round two. Um, but yeah, so. I, like, it's a decent fast electric type, but besides that, it's still a pretty decent, like, uh, maybe defensive pivot. Like, I guess, yeah, it's kind of a defensive pivot. It's not as good at that job as Rotom Wash is, but I already have a water type. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, it gets all the moves, barring Hydro Pump that this does, and this gets Leaf Storm instead. But it still does give me Volt Switch, and something important now is it does get Defog. So, currently, I do have um, Mega Deancey to bounce rocks. I have... Um, Oh my goodness, I have Scizor to defog, and I have Silvali to defog, and I have this to defog, so I am, and then I do have, I do pick up another defogger, uh, actually in the next round, so I'll talk about that, uh, a little bit later, but yeah, so, I'm pretty okay on the hazard removal stuff, um, but yeah, so I mean, it, I mean, it's a Rotom Cut, it does Rotom Cut things, uh, not a Z Crystal user as well, uh, Zygarde isn't a Z Crystal user, uh, Zygarde more so was because, um, uh, like, I, I personally like to have, like, I get that this thing wants a Z-Crystal to break through its own checks, but I personally don't think it does that enough without setup. And, like I said before, Zygarde doesn't really set up, like, as freely as, uh, the Zygarde 50% does. And Rotom, kind of the same deal, like, it is a decent Z user, I will give it that, but honestly, the other Z, the other Z users I chose for my team, I, I thought were just better choices, so, uh, I went with those. Uh, instead of Rotom Mo, even though uh, I'm still really looking forward to using Rotom Mo. Uh, I think Electric Grass is not necessarily like undervalued, but I think it's it, uh, like the things it needs to deal with, it deals with very well. Like, I'm not really worried about any bulky waters really with this Rotom, uh, but yeah, so uh, not too much to say about this. But yeah, next up, uh, I'm still a little lacking on the hazard side of things. Currently, my only rocker is Mega Deancey, and obviously Mega Deancey doesn't want to run rocks every single week. So we ended up picking up Aerodactyl, which does uh, give me uh, my favorite speed tier of 130, and we did make this uh, one of our Z alternates. So um, basically, I picked this as the alternate because I really, really, really wanted this last season, and unfortunately, it got sniped. I got Crobat out of it, so I am not... I'm not upset about that because Crobat is like now one of my favorite Pokemon to use. Like Crobat is so good, but yeah. Um, but like, look at the coverage it gets. Like it gets Aqua Tail, which has shaky accuracy. I mean, obviously Earth like it gets Edgequake, which is good for Z moves. Um, and then obviously like the Elemental Fangs. So uh, if I do have to set up with Tone Claws, I guess I can, even though I don't really know if I will. Uh, but yeah, like uh, Taunt plus um, like Taunt plus Stealth Rocks. Like it just offers so much utility. And then on top of that, uh, also uh, it's Fly Z. I don't have to use Fly because uh, Aerodactyl actually gets access to Sky Attack, which is an insane nuke for a Z Crystal, like way stronger than Lando's T. The only reason I think Lando's might still hit m more powerfully is just because of Lando's' raw like attack stat. Um, but yeah, so I like just looking at the the moves that Aerodactyl could get. I really wanted to give this a Z Crystal and give it a try. Um, I personally like i was good like had i got this last season i would have made it a z user as well so i'm really happy i get to use it now as it does give me another defogger and more importantly another stealth rocker which uh is really important to me and unfortunately um uh it's kind of an issue on my team right now i'm not gonna lie knowing the full like my full draft now uh aerodactyl is also eight points so i guess by now we only have uh okay so 16 um i guess we have 24 points left okay yeah that makes sense so uh i my original plan was gonna be uh pick up conkelder for my fighting types since i'm still missing that swampert for my um swampert for my secondary ground type that can also stealth rock which i was really looking forward to and then something that could sponge psychic types uh, se uh, sorry, something that could sponge fighting type it hits uh, really well because currently, with the way my team is looking, like with Aerodactyl, 
uh, Rotom, Zygarde, like, look at all this. Like, there's really nothing here that wants to be able to sponge fighting type attacks. So, uh, that, th those were the main things I was looking for. So, unfortunately, Conkeldor got sniped. So, I kind of had to rework around my plans. I really, really, really wanted Swampert. Um, but I could have gotten it and then grabbed, like, Bian Chao, say, in, for 11 points. But, ultimately, I decided on something... A little different as it gives me sort of a, an underrated versatile offensive threat as um i like like it's underrated in our league i know most i know most other leagues definitely know the power of this pokemon but our league definitely doesn't i originally like it was my plan b um and then my friend actually it was matt uh matt messaged me asking what he thought about this pokemon leading his team in kills and i said well it's my plan b but if you really want it i'll back off and then it turns out that matt couldn't fit it on his roster just by the way he was building it so i ended up drafting yon mega and uh this is really the only this is really the only reference nickname i've ever given oh gosh shout out to gregulator um but, um yeah, Yon Mega is just like insane value. Like, could be speed boost to clean up teams that are left behind that either my Manaphy or my Mega Deancey can break through. Um, and then also, uh, it could be Tinted Lens to just break stuff itself. So, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to using Yon Mega. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I unfortunately didn't do like the uh, reverse build around. Like, I didn't plan to draft around Yon Mega. So it, the team might not support it as well as it probably could have, but um, I'm still really looking forward to using this thing. And yeah, again, no Z Crystal on this because um, I don't know, the, the last Pokemon, uh, my last Z user, I personally think is just a little bit better. Um, whereas Yon Mega can still use like choice specs and Life Orb and stuff like that really well. Um, but I think not giving the Z Crystal to my next figure. This was eight points, by the way, and not giving a Z Crystal to Cobalion, which is my next, uh, which was my next pick and my second to last pick. I felt that was criminal because everyone knows how good Z Cobalion can be. Um, yeah, it, like it sets up either like physically or especially with rock or even just speed with rock polish, and then. Uh, more importantly to me <laughs> specifically is that it uh, it becomes a really good knockoff switch in as uh, I don't lose the item so knockoff gets powered down and then I get the attack boost so uh, I'm really liking Cobalion it gives me another rocker which was really important because unfortunately um, because unfortunately my only three rockers on this team spoilers are Mega Deancey, Aerodactyl, and Cobalion uh, they don't really want to run rocks every week, but hopefully I can make it work. If not, I guess I'm going to have to use some transactions. But, uh, yeah, I mean, everyone knows how good Z Cobalion can be. So, and everyone just knows how good Cobalion can be. Because, like, now I get another Taunter. I get another, oh, excuse me, I get another Volt Switch user, which is really important. Yeah, like, Cobalion's just really good value for 11 points. So, I've never tried it personally. I've always wanted to try it, and I was missing a fighting type. I thought at first I wanted Mian Shao, but then... Because, like, in my opinion, I think Mian Shao in general just fit better, um, as it also got access to U-Turn for Momentum, and then it can break stuff easier with, like, Reckless High Jump Kick and stuff like that, and be a little bit, um, excuse me, be a, be a little bit, like, uh, not passive, but, like, hard to kill just because of Regenerator, but then I looked at my Hazard situation, and yeah, I, with me taking Yon Mega, I could not take Mian Shao, because if, if I picked Swampert here, then maybe I would have taken Mian Shao, but, um, but yeah, like I, I needed the other rocker, so I definitely pick Cobalion, and I'm really excited to use it because I like I've seen so many people use this thing, and uh, I, I've seen it put in a lot of work, so I really wanted my chance to, to try out Z Cobalion. And finally, we're in round 11, and <clears throat> uh, we're in round 11, and I think I believe we only have five points left. I believe how much this cost. Either way, this Pokemon took up. Uh, the last bit of my points as we can see here uh, like I said my team does not really switch into fighting type attacks relatively well literally my only resist is uh, for, like granted Yon Mega does four times resist fighting but I mean like look at these defensive stats I'm not I'm not really switching into fighting attacks uh, so yeah I wanted something that could be a really good um, I want something that could be a good fighting type sponge and I ended up picking Musharna because I think it's a little bit under like underrated in general uh, with, with a 116 base HP, it's actually super duper bulky, even without like a whole ton of uh, defense, special defense investment, it can just be bulky just from max HP. 
uh, as well. Like it, it's also like a big reason I picked Musharna was because it's uh, especially with how many points I had left. It was one of the only few like fighting type sponges that I saw that also got reliable recovery. So that was really important to me to get the recovery on this. And then as well, um, it, this also does get baton pass. So. Uh, it, I felt that was important because I can get some momentum on here. So I do have a lot of momentum on this team, uh, which I mean, <laughs> it's a team that was made by me, so that's not really that surprising. Um, but yeah, so, uh, like, I mean, not too much to say about Musharna. It's here to be just a general sponge, uh, mostly because my bulky water doesn't really want to be a general sponge. Um, but yeah, so that is the entire draft. Again, a little bit more rough and a little bit, uh, maybe not rushed. I'm not really looking at the timer, but... Uh, yeah, so this is the team. I have to say, it's probably the most unsure about any draft that I've ever had. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, everything else I've been like, I, like, I'm excited to use all of this stuff, but I'm not too sure that all this stuff is gonna be able to mesh together. I'm not gonna lie, but... Uh, I'm still gonna try my best to make it work and I'm also trying to make this like a no pressure league on myself because like lately with some of my uh, lately with some of my uh, other draft league games like I just like get so invested in it and then if I make a misplay or something I really beat myself up about it and like I almost want to try to treat this as a ladder match not that these matches don't matter in the sense but I'm gonna try not to get too stressed about like clicking the right move every single time um, also like part of that has to do with just me being in school but yeah so uh, yeah I I'm rambling now so that's the team. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. I will be uploading... I'm going to try and get this uploaded on Sunday, which is the same day I'm recording this. Uh, and then, yeah, I will do a weekly upload of all of my battles every single Sunday. So, yeah, keep your guys out, uh, eyes out on the channel, uh, I guess, for the next PDL upload or for my next UPA upload, whichever one you want. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.